Hi everybody, welcome to this Timeline documentary. My name is Dan Snow and here I am in a Lancaster bomber cockpit, one of the few remaining Lancasters from the Second World War, to tell you about my new history channel. It's called History Hit, it's like Netflix for history. Hundreds of history documentaries on there and interviews with many of the world's best historians. Follow the information below this film or just search online for History Hit and make sure you use the code TIMELINE to get a special introductory offer. Now enjoy this show. This is an Iron Age hill fort. It's a kind of prehistoric castle, carved, as its name suggests, into the top of an impressive natural hill. There are literally thousands of monuments like this littered across the British landscape. But this one at Whittenham in Oxfordshire is very unusual because right next to it is another even more impressive hill with nothing visible on it except for a clump of trees. This second hill, Round Hill as it's known, has been baffling archaeologists for centuries. They're sure it's got something to do with the tribe that built the Iron Age fort, but what? Previous archaeology has been small scale but has produced some tantalising clues. In the 18th century, two skeletons were found at the top of the hill and in the 1940s, Archaeologists put in a small trench somewhere down there and found evidence of a building and masses of Iron Age pottery. So clearly something was going on around here, but what? And how does it tie in to the hill fort? We've got just three days to find out. Oh, and we've got a bit of a problem with some newts. A local archaeology unit has been excavating the Iron Age hill fort for the past three weeks. It's never been dug before, and they're hoping to discover when and how it was built and what it originally looked like. They'd also love to find out what its Iron Age inhabitants used the neighbouring hill for. Round Hill is only 200 metres away and is actually higher than the fort. But they haven't got the time or money to investigate it, which is where we come in. So what can we do to help you with what you're doing? Well, we've concentrated on the known. It's never been dug, but it's presumed to be an early on a sort of 600 BC hill fort. The other hill's more enigmatic, and I think there's a lot to be done up there because we just don't have the background. Right. What are we going to do then, Mick? Well, in the 18th century, they found burials on the other hill here. And so we've actually started putting a trench in the wood up there to see whether we can sort of sort that out. Well, you've already started to work, but we haven't even done the geophysia. No, but it's difficult to do the geophysics in woodland like that, so we've had to go for where there are gaps in the trees. And then about 60 years ago, uh, a local chap called Rhodes dug a hole down here mm. and found the remains of what might be a Roman villa, but he also found masses of Iron Age material. So there may be some sort of settlement across this area that goes with the hill fort, so the relationship of that will be interesting. So we're off at a cracking pace. Phil and Francis are delving into the top of our hill. They've no idea what they're going to find. There could be buildings up here or more bodies, but they're convinced there must be something. And we're not restricting ourselves to the summit of the hill. It was somewhere on this hillside that local archaeologist P.P. Rhodes discovered his Iron Age building. We want to find out whether it was an isolated structure or part of a much larger settlement but first we've got to find his trench. We've got measurements. He tells us the centre of his square trench was 510 feet from the Little Witten and Wallingford Road at the point where the footpath meets the road here, so 510 along there, and then 103 between the centre of the trench and back onto the road. Well, that's all in feet, of course, Yeah, yeah not well, it would metres. Be, yeah. <laughs> we can work out using a bit of mass how far we have to go along the road, and it's just a basic offset from that point. 
If they can find Rhodes' old trench, we'll be able to expose more of the Iron Age building he found. Do you think you can get that before the geophysics did? That's not much of a challenge, is it? <laughs> <laughs> the question then will be whether the people who lived in Rhodes' Iron Age building had anything to do with the fort towering over them, where Tim and his team have already opened a vast trench across the ramparts. They're searching for pottery and features to help date the hill fort and find out how and why it was built. We're nowhere near the bottom of this ditch yet, but it's, yeah. the scale of these ramparts is really, really quite something. Yeah. I mean, you've done a, a huge sort of slice through them, haven't you, to presumably give you the profile of the, of the ditches? Right the way from the interior to the bottom. The aim is really to find, to get back to the chalk and to get the full sequence if there is more than one cut of the ditch. You know, yeah. after all, these sites were sometimes in use for hundreds of years. Yeah. Of course, when it was originally dug, that chalk that they dug out of the bottom all the way up the side, on the top of the rampart, yeah. and on the outside, yeah. it must have been an incredible sight. Yeah, um, gleaming white sort of. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, yeah. and, and from here, of course, on the Berkshire Downs opposite, there were other hill forts uh, yeah. that on a clear day you can see and could see us right. you know, up right. here on, on Castle yeah. Hill. And presumably there were fences along these banks. Well, yes. We, 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 in fact, just over here, we've just started to uncover the oh, outer right. edge. right. Can we have a look at that? Yeah, yeah. Come yeah. and have a look. We've only had just had this cleaned up by machine, but yeah. we've already uncovered these dark circles, one here, one here. Oh, yes, they're quite, quite obvious, Which we aren't think they? are probably where posts stood on the front of the rampart. So, so this would have held the fighting platform up on the top, in fact. That's right. From the size of the post holes, Tim estimates that the palisade would have provided a substantial and impressive added line of defence on top of the ramparts. The summit of Round Hill is proving a trickier proposition. Try that. Try that. Phil's only been able to put two small trenches in among the trees. So far, there's no sign of buildings or bodies. What's a natural? It's uh, sand and gravel capping on the top with gold clay and chalk. That's what we got here, it is then, just isn't it? There's the patch of gravel coming. Yeah. So there's the clay. So that's a big fat nothing in Trench 1. And the story from Trench 2 is equally depressing. It's utterly sterile. Very small, no archaeology. Nothing in here. <laughs> no, there isn't. It's just nice geology. There may well be juicy archaeology on top of this hill, but because of the density of the tree cover, we simply can't get at it. And Mick gives the order to abandon the summit. What a disaster. But all is perhaps not lost. We've still got a huge area of ground below the summit to explore and the prospect of unearthing in it an Iron Age settlement, if our luck turns, if Geophys can provide us with a target. So what have we got then, John? Well... Oh, oh crikey, that's good, Well, wow, that's fantastic. We're stood here then. Yeah. And that's 80 metres up to that point. You can see this fantastic ditched enclosure with an entrance at that point there. What sort of date would you think that would be then? Oh, just on morphology, Iron Age, maybe Romano-British. Right, right. Well, right. that would fit with excavation that was done somewhere in this area before, which produced Iron Age and Romano-British pottery. Presumably we can't see roads trench in, the, in that, that... Well, it's certainly 10 can... foot in size. Right. That, that's, I mean, 10 feet is just that. Right, We've right. got a 30 metre block here. Yeah. Well, the survey are trying to locate that as we speak with a mixture of sort of schoolboy <laughs> school maths and satellite survey. So we're waiting for how, them, are we? How do you oh. feel about that, Jim? Yeah, that, that, <laughs> well, look, I can give you some targets in the meantime. Yes. I mean, I'd personally like to dig that and dig one of those, if not more. Right. Superb pits, I think. I think we should go for those two. The terminal should be in here. Right. That's a bit more like it. Nice, crisp targets, lots of wide open space. So in go our next two trenches. Trench three at the entrance of the enclosure, which could have protected a small settlement. And trench four, where we're hoping to find another section of the ditch and one of the pits. At least the trenches will go in when we've dealt with our next little problem. The Whitnam clumps are home to a rare species of animal, the great crested newt. They're protected by law, and we've only been given permission to dig here on condition that we stick to this previously negotiated zone. And before we can start digging, we've got to mow the area where we want to put our trenches and conduct a fingertip search. 
Any newts we find must be evacuated to a place of safety. Will I know one if I see one? Have you seen any of the pictures? You certainly will. <laughs> this is what they're looking for, the great crested newt. And this is uh, a girl great crested newt. Okay. So it's hands and knees job yep, then, is it? Absolutely, yeah, in a row. <laughs> this wasn't in the right. contract. Searching the, this area that's been mown. <laughs> If I was a self-respecting you, I would have legged it out of here Absolutely, with somebody yeah. come along with a mower. <laughs> well, if you've got your legs left. Well, you can see we've mown it high um, so that it, there's very little chance of a, a newt actually being mown while we did it. Come out, come out, wherever you are. It's a time-consuming process, but no newts is good newts, and an hour after we've decided where to put the two new trenches, they're finally underway. And almost straight away in trench three, Phil hits our first archaeology. It's like a tessera, doesn't it? Um, it certainly does. You've got mortar on that side and that side, mortar on at least three, four sides. It's not a high quality floor, no. is it? I mean, it, but it, it's, it's a, it's a workmanlike floor. Uh, absolutely, yes. Yeah, we get a pick and shovel into this. Just had a monkey in a boat with a trowel. All the finds have been Roman so far, but Phil's got a long way to go before he hits the bottom of the ancient ditch, so it could still turn out to be Iron Age. And Henry's tracked down Rhodes's old trench, so we should find something Iron Age soon. So here? Yeah, but basically, uh, my measurements from Rhodes, his, his description of where his trench is, puts it at the centre of it just here. Well, look, Phil's trench is going over the end of the ditch at the entrance. Yeah. The point you're telling me is about here. That's well away from this noise that I have with the building. Because he's meant to be on the southeast corner of that building, but his measurements put it just here. We've got things here, but the main building looks to be quite a bit over there. We'll, well see. We'll find out. So once the area's been denuted, Trench 5 goes in here to locate Rhodes Iron Age building. Phil? You had a ropey old trench up the top of the hill this morning. Is this one any better? I'll tell you what it is, Tony. Things have so totally changed. We're literally getting finds by the bucket full. Are these all from that trench? Absolutely. Do you want to have a look oh, at yeah. them? Oh, yeah. Wow. an amazing assemblage. It's a right old mixture. We've got uh, quite a bit of Roman material, including building material and a range of pottery, but in particular we've got a lot of Iron Age pottery, mostly early Iron Age, I think. But the beauty of it is it's such, in such big, crisp pieces. I mean, look at that. Look, they even fit together. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, th this stuff has not been moved very That's far. And they seem to have quite sharpish edges, don't they? They haven't been rolled around a lot. And, and of course, we've also got tesserae as well. Ah. Yeah. So we are dealing with a Roman building with a floor. Yep. And again, that, that ties in with what Rhodes found in 1948. Now that Phil's found both Iron Age and Roman pottery in the enclosure ditch, it looks as if people were living here from at least 600 BC to about 400 AD. That's a thousand years of continuous occupation. Inside the enclosure, there's no sign yet of anything Roman in Trench 5. But Matt has uncovered a layer of Iron Age pottery. Better still, it's lying on a cobbled surface, just as Rhodes described. South is that way, isn't yeah. it? So if we get that oriented... So, so he's, he's got that side of it in his trench. Our trench has obviously got the other side of it, effectively, yeah. coming round perhaps like that. It looks rectilinear here, doesn't it? It, do, it does. I mean, these red cobbles go pretty much north-south, straight along there. And there's nothing Nothing across there. there at all. So we've just clipped the corner. But we've clipped the corner that he hasn't disturbed, uh, yeah. rather than the one that he Absolutely, yeah. I mean, this is undisturbed here. Oh, have you got any pottery? Yeah, yeah, there's been some really nice bits, actually. I'll come over and show them. Oh, you've got some huge lumps. Huge bits, yeah. I mean, look at that bit there, the decorated piece. Wow, look at that with a sort of thumb-impressed yeah. decoration around there. Mm. Early Iron Age, I think. That's fantastic because one thing Rhodes says, the reason he's so convinced that this is a square building that's of Iron Age date is mm. that the layer above it has almost exclusively Iron Age pottery in it. Yep. Matt and Carenza are convinced this is the square Iron Age building described by Rhodes. The question now is, was it an isolated building or part of a settlement? And did the people who lived in it have any part to play in the life of the nearby fort? Like perhaps building it in the first place? 
quite clever engineering, this. I mean, it yeah. looks like a, a, a very large ditch and a very large rampart. That's because uh, it is, Stuart, yeah, a very no, large No, no, the, the Iron Age engineers are very clever. What they do, basically, is take the slope of the hill yeah. and cut a terrace into it and then just dig down on the terrace. So that creates what looks like a massive ditch here. Put on most of the material down there. So from below, that looks like a massive rampart with a massive ditch behind it and another massive rampart. It's just clever engineering, minimal effort, mm. maximum effect. Yeah. And what's quite interesting, if you look so at... So what you're, you're going for rather more of a display than a, than a serious defence. Indeed, defense, I mean, I've looked at Hill... See, I don't buy that. Oh, well, I've looked at I Hill Forts all over all. the place. <laughs> and what's interesting, I've seen on lots of Hill Forts where you get really <laughs> massive structures like this on one side, yeah. but go around the back end yeah. and there's virtually nothing in yeah. terms of defensive capability. Yeah. And if you walk around this one, what's interesting, when you get round the side where the face is round hill, yeah. look at the size of the rampart and ditch there, and it's yeah. nothing of this proportion. No. You mentioned, you know, very impressive here. That's facing towards the ridgeway. And it strikes me, you know, that's where the opposition was, over there. Mm. So you made it mm. look really grand. Mm. Over there towards round hill, OK, it's not as, as incredibly spectacular, so they were probably friendly over there, but I also wouldn't fancy going across those ramparts. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, seriously, if you have blokes up the top there with slings yeah. Yeah. and uh, bows and arrows... It's See, I think should ask the lads on the ramparts. Is it defence? Defence! <laughs> Wrong <are>. answer. <laughs> Back down in the valley beneath our hill, Ian's been trying to get to grips with the enclosure. And although he's hit archaeology, he's somewhat baffled. Well, yeah, it's supposed to be a pit. I mean, here we are on the geophysics. It's this row here, isn't it? Yeah. And um, it's supposed to be that blob there. Yeah. But we've got a load of flints, so... Maybe it's a fill of a pit. Right. We ought to be seeing the ditch of the enclosure up there, haven't we? Well, I think we might have the edge of this ditch coming through now. Right. You see this line of white pebbles? Oh, right, sure? sort of dipping down. Yeah. That's either the edge or it's a fill dipping into a ditch, into all this big black morass. Right. Oh, so that could be all ditch then, couldn't yeah. it? Well, I don't think yeah. we've got a back edge yet. Right, OK. End of day one. And after a full start on the summit of Round Hill, we're now wrestling with some intriguing archaeology. We've got a huge enclosure ditch, an Iron Age building inside it, a pit filled with flints, and a load of Roman and Iron Age finds. What does it all mean? That's what we've got to find out tomorrow. A new day, a new set of geophys results, and a big surprise. This is the building we were looking at last night. This is the thing that Carenza thought might be a Roman villa or something. And look at our resistance results now. Good God! That is the same area. What is it, resistance? That's resistance, and the black is showing high resistance. It looks like a building. It's aligned east-west, and there's a hint of an apse at that end. Which is that end? Is that the east end? That is the east end. Hang on, so if it's aligned <laughs> east-west and it's got an apse, does that mean we're looking at a church or something like that? Um, well, I mean, it's the sort of thing that a church does, isn't it, eh? <laughs> I mean, this looks too good to be true. I, I can't believe it myself, to be honest. Um, Where is it on the ground? Well, basically, we, we're just here. But it, it's quite a big building. It's 10, 15 metres long. We, we um, don't need a big trench to sort that out. Oh, no. We, 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 we need to put something across and establish exactly what it is. That's right, and how deep we've got to go down and then how well preserved it is and then what sort of building it is. Phil, let me get this clear. If it <laughs> is a Roman church, that is very rare. That is it? very, very rare. Very, very important indeed. We've got to sort this one out. It's the beginning of day two, and the archaeologists are very funny. Normally, they're so laid back, but you really get this sense of suppressed excitement this morning. It may all crash and burn by tomorrow, but at the moment, it feels like we may have something really important. But we won't know until we dig. So once the area's been denuted, Trench 6 will go in here, on the south wall of the possible Roman church. Meanwhile, in Trench 3, Phil's still trying to date the ditch that encloses the site, and he's found a tantalising clue. I would test your knowledge on Roman artefacts now, then. Oh, dear. Got a very strange one here. Oh, good Lord. See, it's, it's an iron thing, and it's got a, a socket there. Yep, I see that. And then it, it, it splays out at this end. Mm -hmm. It's got these two 
sort of notches in it. It's almost like it's a kind of three-pronged fork. Yep. Yeah, except not too many Roman forks, I don't think. Is well, it, is it, <laughs> well, there we go, then. Is it, is, it, is it from a Roman context, do we think? It's got all the Roman pottery coming oh, okay. with it. It's got it's, a tessery yeah. with it. Yeah. It's got to be Roman. Yeah. I have an idea, actually. I wonder if it isn't actually a, a perforated spearhead. They're not very common. They're associated in the literature with a particular rank in the Roman army, a beneficiarius, and it would be a ceremonial object. As it happens, we have an inscription from Dorchester, just over the hill, recording a beneficiarius consularis. The discovery of a Roman ceremonial spear placed at the entrance means that the ditch is more likely to be Roman than Iron Age after all. So to make absolutely sure, Stuart's checking out the other section of ditch in Trench 4. Oh, well, going on down, I think I'm getting near the bottom. Uh, if you've got anything to, to date it, I think it's firmly Roman, because we're getting big chunks of this tile, I'm afraid. <laughs> Don't be afraid. <laughs> Roman's fine. <laughs> it looks as if our chances of finding an Iron Age settlement are quite slim. We now know that the enclosure ditch is definitely Roman. And the geophys results are pointing to a building that's probably Roman as well. The only Iron Age building we've found so far is Rhodes in Trench 5. What started as an Iron Age story is beginning to take a rather Roman turn. But there's no doubt that this hill fort's Iron Age. And at the bottom of a pit within the ramparts, Tim's team have made a disturbing discovery. This is the body of a small child. How do you know it's a child? From the size of the bones, uh, some of them have come loose as, as, as we've been cleaning. This one in particular, which is the humerus, this bone here, measured that, and the measurement suggests that the baby was about a month old when, when it died. Can you tell which way it's lying? We're a bit confused about that at the moment. Uh, you've got the skull here, that's the front, so it looks like the head was pushed down right forward. Possibly the body's coming round like this, maybe in a slightly crouched position. We can't really be certain at the moment. Why would they have put a baby in a pit? Well, if this was a rubbish pit, as people used to believe, then they're just chucking away a baby with the rubbish. Now, I don't think people in the Iron Age were like that. People have never been like that. So I think that was a deliberate placing, and it's probably quite a, you know, a special, reverential, very sad deposit. Do you buy that, Tim? I'm not convinced entirely. I think that there are a lot of burials, as, as Francis says, in these pits. Yeah. But with infants in particular, you know, you get Roman infants in ditches all over the place. And I suspect that they had a different view of how important these infants were. So they may have just put them into the ground where there were convenient holes. This is the, uh, the prosaic and the poet, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Without a glimpse of any newts, Phil's hot on the trail of our mystery building in Trench 6. Down, is it? Yeah. And already he's hit a layer of demolition rubble. Just layers and layers and layers. It's too early to tell whether this is the rare Roman church we hope it is. <laughs> Look at that. I think I'll probably need a tray alone for that. But the roof tiles and tesserae from the rubble confirm that it is at least Roman. A couple of hours later, the first traces of the foundations themselves begin to appear. Phil's confidence is growing. This is where they reckon the wall was going to be. And here we've actually got big lumps of mortar which may actually represent where they've demolished a wall and actually we've got bits of mortar. And then beyond that is where the geophysics says that the anomalies die out and we just go into a, a, a soil. But if we're going to prove that this is a church here, then it, the trench has got to be where the apse is, but you decided not to put it where the apse That's is. That's right. I mean, at the moment, we haven't defined the apse well enough. What we want to know is, is what the state of this building is. The best way to do that is to, is to put a trench exactly where you've got a clearly defined edge. If you've got a clearly defined edge, that is the best way to start looking for the building. And then if we can resolve that, then we can either extend the trench or put in another one to actually look at the apps. In other words, I'm going to have to be a bit patient. But there's plenty to get on with. We've still got a whole Iron Age settlement to find. And it looks as if Francis is about to open a new front. Well, there's a, there's, there's a link Francis, to... are you newt fertling? I am, Tony. Yes, I am. It makes a great change from archaeology. Yeah. Does it imply that you're going to dig? Yes. 
But yeah. less than an hour ago, yeah. Mick said to me, whatever we do, yeah. we mustn't put in any more trenches. What we've got to do is concentrate on what we've got. Yeah, well, I got at him over lunch. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, I'm reasonably sure, I think we all are, that that enclosure is, is a Roman feature of some sort. Yeah. And I'm interested in that early pottery that came out of it. And just outside the enclosure here was a group of pits and I got a pretty good idea that they're going to turn out to be early Iron Age, so I'm really keen to get my, my fingers on that stuff. So, because you're the prehistoric expert, you can pull <laughs> rank with Mick, who isn't, basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't say that's what happened, but there was a, an exchange of views. Why are you excited about pits? Well, the thing is, these pits, they were deliberately filled in. The pottery is very fresh, it's in superb condition, and we'll get environmental samples out of them. Actually tell us how people were living on these clumps and around these clumps. So actually the key to explaining what life was like here lies in those pits. The geophys results are showing a rash of pits all over the site, which suggests a sizeable spread of Iron Age settlement here. If Francis is right, and these are pits, and they are Iron Age. Hence, Trench 7 into the thickest clump of them. But in Trench 6, Phil's initial enthusiasm and confidence are fast evaporating. The more he digs, the less of our mystery Roman building he finds. It appears to have been so thoroughly demolished, not even the foundations remain. I still argue that, in fact, you can see the cut of the robber trench going right up to there. Well, I think it's been robbed totally away. I mean, we've got no floors, we've got virtually no walls, so that when they dismantled it, I mean, they just ma dismantled it big time. They just took everything away, and that the only thing that was left was probably quite a, a discreet pile of rubble. So sort of anything that was usable in terms of stone or whatever, they've carted away? Pretty much. I mean, the only... Phil will struggle to pick out the outline of the building, let alone work out its function. His only hope is that other parts of it have survived better. So, more in hope than expectation, Phil's opening a new trench to see if he can find another wall in better nick, if there's one there at all. Luckily, the news is better in Francis's new trench. He's found his pit, and it's full of bits of Iron Age debris, which is going to get environmentally sampled. Looks to me rather like floor sweepings. Everything we've got so far has been very small, and that's rather good. That's what we want. And the things that we find here could indicate things like diet and... Oh, yeah. And, uh... Diet and what, the, how they were farming. I mean, you know, have we got sheep bones or, or are they growing corn you know what was going on here so see look there you go it's a typical the bone pieces are tiny they're all hmm. and that that's got this sort of fracture that comes from when you actually break up a bone when, when, when the animal shortly after it's been killed so it's yeah. still full of fat and, and and you get this characteristic it's called spiral breaking like that and uh, there's lots of it. The bone preservation here is superb. We've already started to sieve the contents of the other pits and we've found a mass of information to help tell us what life was like here in the Iron Age. We found the bones and teeth from sheep, pigs and cattle and we've also found traces of wheat and barley. All of which show us that this must have been a very rich and productive area for farming. But the very presence of a fort a few hundred metres away reminds us of a darker side to Iron Age life. And although the baby in the pit was probably not a military casualty, the archaeologists, who are now lifting it bone by bone, are nevertheless disturbed by what they're finding. I mean, the one thing that is significant is that this baby's body is disposed of differently to most Iron Age dead, because on whole we don't find them in the ground. And what is dis still disturbs me is that the head is really upside down in relation to the torso. Mm. That is the top of the head, that is the lower part of the head, and it's really quite upside down. It could have been a sacrifice. Yep, that's quite it's a possible. nasty thought, but it mm. could have been. And once the skeleton was removed, another theory presented itself. Now that's interesting, you see that white stone in there. Come across that before in sort of Iron Age context. Yesterday these appeared, they were higher up, but, but in this sort of position here. So there's it's a almost like resting out on them. It does look as if there's been some sort of careful ritual putting the baby into the ground, doesn't it? With a sort of 
Yes. Burnt wattle and daub structure underneath it and then the stones placed around its head. Mm. Yes. Sounds quite a lot of yeah. care, really. Yeah. But sadly, we'll never know if it was buried by its parents or left as an honoured sacrifice to the gods. The baby has actually been the least of Carenza's worries. All day, she and Matt have been scraping away in Trench 5, trying to reveal more of our only Iron Age structure. Yesterday, they found a mass of Iron Age pottery dating to the 6th and 7th centuries BC, and under it, a cobbled floor surface and some post holes. Today, they're extending the trench, delving deeper into the archaeology and they found not only more of the Iron Age building, but evidence of a second Roman building. This is the Roman building, the mortar floor, which has got mixed in bits of wall pl painted wall plaster from an earlier building in it, so we know that's an earlier building. And then down here we've got this Iron Age surface, but this is the critical thing. There's about eight inches build-up of plough soil here with no occupation in it at all. So that's telling us that between the Middle Iron Age, at the absolute latest, and the second century AD. This part of the site, at least, was completely abandoned. There's no continuity of occupation from the early, early Iron Age through to the Roman. Which means not only do we have both Roman and Iron Age stories to worry about on this site, but an uncomfortable 300-year gap between the two when the site was apparently abandoned. What's going on? This morning we all seem so incredibly focused on our mysterious apsidal building. Yeah. And then we seem to lose that because the walls were robbed out. You've just got excited about your pits <laughs> over here. <laughs> and John's just given me a brand new lot of geophys with a whole load of other targets. It seems to me we've entered the land of intellectual anarchy. <laughs> <laughs> Does it all fit together? What we're getting is a focus towards, if you like, domestic life. You know, what we're seeing here is how people lived at the bottom of those hills. And so I think we're helping to ask a lot of the questions that Tim's trying to answer next door. Now we've got the pits, Francis Ding, is particularly interesting from my point of view, because now we've seen these pits and we can recognise them on the geophysics, we can see how far this Iron Age settlement seems to be extending. And it's already gone way beyond where we'd expected. We, we were focusing on one enclosure, but we don't know whether it's part of a much bigger settlement. Yeah. So if we have time, it would be nice to look at that I, as well. I think that's really what it amounts to, doesn't it? By yeah. about tomorrow lunchtime, we've got to look and see whether perhaps pop in a machine trench across mm. that. But we're not going to walk away from our Roman building, are we? Well, Phil says it's been pretty well trashed. It's been recycled. We might be lucky just to get the ghost of a building there. Even if we only get the robbed out walls, we can still find out something about its scale mm. and even its character. So I think there's some mileage in it yet. So a limited amount of work just to solve that would be, would yes. be useful. Yeah, I think you might be... pick up our apps. Yep, yeah, let's go for that as well. It's, it's... So tomorrow, more geophys results to explore, one last stab at the possible Roman church, and hopefully an Iron Age settlement to go with the fort. Join us after the break. Beginning of day three here at the Whittenham Clumps in Oxfordshire and two days ago we started excavating at the top of that hill and found absolutely nothing. So we began to look inside this area here because of this beautiful geophys and that's round about here and we found evidence of two Roman buildings and some Iron Age stuff and a big Roman ditch over there. But now the whole excavation spreading out all over the place. It now looks as if the settlement was far bigger than we could have imagined, and we want to know more about the people who lived here. Who were they? How long were they here? And what were they doing? We've only got one day left. But we can't ignore our search for what we're hoping could be a very rare Roman church. Yesterday we were very depressed when we thought it had been robbed out. But this morning Phil's looking much happier. I've literally gone down that much, and look what I've come down onto. This superb, level, incredibly compacted mortar floor. I mean, every, as I scrape it, you can hear just how solid it is. It's, it's been protected by all this demolition rubble. It must mean we're inside a building. We've got to be with a floor of this quality. We thought the whole building was going to be absolutely trashed. It may not be as badly uh, damaged as we thought it would be. OK, so that's coming along nicely. What else? We need to find that, that third trench across the building we were looking for. This is my apps. It is, it's your apps. Your, your so, so-called apps. Yeah. So uh, where's the trench for that? Here. Oh, back where I was. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, that'll, that should get the end of the building. Um, maybe get the apps, presumably. Uh, 
Why did you say, ugh? We'll get the western end of the building. You don't think it's an apse? I, I'm not quite as confident. But whatever the thing is that looks like an the end of the apse. building, certainly yeah. the end of the building. Yeah. Geophys are extending their search towards the hill fort to see how far the Iron Age settlement stretches in that direction. And at last, Phil gets a trench open to look for the apse, so we might get a result on the possible church. While he's busy in the trenches, Stu and I have taken to the air to get the bigger picture. And we're rewarded with the most exciting discovery yet. They crop marks, Stuart. Yeah, look at them. You can see there's a whole complex of them on this side of the road. It's fantastic. They're I mean, it looks like there's a series of trackways, there's enclosures. What are the little round ones that look like spots? Well, I think they must be pits. That must be part of the complex that we've got the geophysical results from the other side of the road. This is fantastic, isn't it? We couldn't have wished for better conditions for finding crop marks. With one of the hottest summers on record, followed by a sharp burst of rain, the features stand out clearly in the fields. And it's even more obvious when the aerials are printed up. It seems that the crop marks could be one of the most valuable clues to help us understand our settlement. What really impressed me about what we saw from the helicopter was that that whole field seemed to be pockmarked with little yeah, pits, little yeah. depressions. It's quite clear in, in the Iron Age they stored grain in silos, underground silos, cutting either the chalk or the gravel. And you'd think, well, it would go rotten, you know. But it, we've tried it and it doesn't. What, what happens is you seal the top of the pit with clay, with the grain in. The grain then uses the oxygen up and then it goes dormant in, in the carbon dioxide in the, in the pit and it'll stay like that for several years. And you've got the complete stored crop and just this edge of, of, of rubbish that you've got to set fire to or chuck away. So that's what you're seeing from all those, all those dark patches of the storage pits. When they go out of use, they fill them with rubbish. And of course, that produces the nice dark crop mark, but the whole of Thames Valley is full of them. Phil's new trench has finally nailed the mystery Roman building, but not quite how we'd hoped. He's now convinced that far from being a very rare Roman church, it is in fact a rather ordinary villa. The confusion arose because of the way the structure was demolished. It looks as if the west wall was the first to go, and when it did, all the roof tiles slid off, forming a neat pile. And that's what looked like an apse on the geophys. But if that's a little disappointing, the overall story of the site is taking shape very nicely. We've got a huge hall of pottery that stretches from the early Iron Age to the late Roman a staggering 1,000 years. But having sorted the finds into a timeline, we've confirmed what Carenza's found in Rhodes Trench. Well, this, is, this is Middle Iron Age, and I've had to, to work quite hard to find any Middle Iron Age <laughs> material in, in our assemblages so far. There's much less of it. The late Iron Age, ceramically speaking, is totally absent on this site. It's just not there. It must be what? Four or five hundred years. It might not be as long as that, but it could certainly be. It could certainly be three hundred years. Paul's discovery has backed up Carenza's evidence from Rhodes Trench that showed the site was abandoned for three centuries. But it still doesn't explain why it happened. John's turned up something rather intriguing too: the latest geophys results, and they're showing a couple of very strange anomalies. You're going to like this a lot, uh -huh. right? Yeah. But yeah. there's a price to pay for it. <laughs> That's the extension of the survey. Uh -huh. oh. <laughs> but what yeah. are these then? I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I'd put money on them being barrows. Iron really? Age square barrows. Are you oh. sure? You don't normally get them this far south. I know. Well, I've dug some in Northamptonshire. Um, I know mostly they're in Yorkshire, but wow, if they were. <laughs> what, what, what else could they be then? Well, Tim. you occasionally get small Iron Age enclosures, square yeah. ones, in, in, you know, in, in the Iron Age, well, but. Less than 20 metres square? Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's very pretty unusual, small, isn't it? Yeah. And they have oh, dots gonna... in the middle. Oh, yes. We're going to have to have a look at those, <laughs> aren't we? Well, uh... and that's, that's the point. If, if we're going to look at those, we've already worked out what we can do in the time we've got left. If you want to change yeah. the agenda, then something has to go. Can't look at this yeah. anymore. Well, this is the obvious yeah. thing, isn't it? That we yeah. perhaps lose that and move people over to, yeah. to do to this. down here. But there's another well, problem. The, the, yeah. What's a bigger problem. That's the limit of our licence. We can do anything that side. So we can't dig this side, in fact? We're outside. Right. 
Right. It's just a whisker, isn't it? I mean, we're, I mean, if we're not working over there, could we shift it that way? Um, I'm not sure it's I that easy. I think that's what we'd have to try and do if you were mm. adamant that you wanted to do this. We'd have to try and negotiate yeah. our T-shaped area to, to go We can't else. expand the survey no, area. No. There's a possibility we might be we able might to move, be able move it, it across. but it's your decision. Yeah. I think that makes sense because the hill fort's just off, yeah, just off the plan. Yeah. So we're moving towards the hill fort. We're trying to get the link between them. Yes. So in a way, I suppose it does make sense to concentrate yeah. our efforts. You could always come yeah. back to that later on. I well, mean, you know, yeah. another year yeah. or whatever. Another year, yeah. yeah. So you want to go for that? Oh, got you. I think we have right. to. I'll yeah. go and see if yes, I can have yes, a chat yes. with Tony and we'll see where we can do something about the area. Okay. Okay. While we wait to get the go-ahead for our new trench, Stuart thinks he's solved the mystery of the missing 300 years, and he's called Francis over to the hill fort to get his opinion on his new theory. We saw some crop marks in that wheat field over there, just beyond the road where the excavations are taking place. Yeah. And what I've done is had a look at the images and transcribed them onto here, what, right. what's in that field of wheat over there, just on the side of the road. Look at that. Oh, wow. Well, there's the road, there's, yeah. the, there's the farm in the distance. Yeah. This is the enclosure that John found on his geophysics where the excavations are. So there's a whole complex of things just in the next field to where we're actually working. That sort of resembles a, a, a class of sites known as banjo enclosures, doesn't mm, it? It does rather, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, which are usually Middle Iron Age in date. And of course, that's rather exciting because that's what we're missing there. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, we've got early and we've got Roman, but not middles. And of course, those Middle Iron Age settlements actually go with the hill fort as well because there's plenty of Middle Iron Age stuff here. Right. That was probably where the people lived who occupied this place as hill fort in times of trouble. And I don't think we've known that before. Yeah. I think that's really exciting. We've had the OK to shift the T-zone, but with time running out fast, we're desperate to get started. Anything that looks or feels like a newt, <laughs> if you find one, tell me. There's no way of bypassing the newt management scheme. These things can't be hurried. And after a rigorous fingertip search... That is denuted. So, with only four hours left, it's up to the two old pros to see if they can find a square barrow with an intact Iron Age burial. Oh, ah. Okay. Oh, that's better, isn't it? Raktures hit the bottom in Francis's pit, and as we'd hoped, the pottery's confirming that the pit is early Iron Age, and it's contemporary with the hill fort, too. The two old troopers are putting us to shame with their perseverance. Francis? Yeah? Okay. I think I'm down. They've been hard at it for three hours and already they've nearly finished. Yeah. I tell you what though, Phil, if that pottery and everything turns out to be exactly the same as my pit over there, then you're talking about a hell of a big settlement, aren't you? Oh, ah, uh, yeah. Hell of a big Yeah. You're blown as much as I am, old boy. Well, I've been digging the dish. <laughs> And on the other side of the site, underneath the flints, Ian's uncovered another large pit and a vast piece of pot. That's, that's extremely impressive. I think it's about ready to come out. OK. okay. Fantastic. Magnificent. There you go. Brilliant. Cheers. Yeah, there could be a lot more in this pit. It's so yeah. big. It's a very slack profile. It's not very pronounced. and. I think it's very early Iron Age. So we're talking, what, 7th century? Yeah, why not? Yeah, that sort of thing. Blimey. Yeah, <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's really good. I mean, that's such an impressive piece of pot. And it's a hell of a big pot too. This massive pot was made locally and was used more than 2,500 years ago by the farmers to store their produce. Right, you've got a nice selection of um, mostly early Iron Age shirts. Yeah, lovely. that's what I... Yeah. That's what, hang on, what's that? Oh, oh good Lord, looks like a loom weight, doesn't it? It does. Look, there's the perforation so through it. it is, good Lord, yes. Look at that. Let's have a look. Oh, <laughs> I like these, late Bronze Age. You reckon? Yep. Technically, it's an actually perforated cylindrical clay loom weight. I don't weight. want to know what it is technically, <laughs> I want to know what it is. Yeah, it's late Bronze Age. It's, it's a cracker. It's a sort of sausage of clay, which you stick a stick through to make the hole, and then you hang it from the bottom of the loom and you get a row of them and it tensions up the fabric. Well, these cylindrical ones, you don't get them into the Iron Age, do you? No, I don't no, think so. No. No. 
So that pushes the story back here by a couple of hundred years. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Splendid. Yeah. I mean, we've got enough pottery here as well, I think, to suggest people are living here yeah. because it looks like we've actually got structural evidence here. Oh, Look, yeah. we've got a post, post hole, hole there. in there and we've got one in there as well. So yeah, we, right. we, we're beginning to get actual buildings, I think, actually in this in this right. uh, enclosure. Come and look at my ditch. I was going to say... Oh. Not a lot in it, um, but the main thing about this ditch is that it's very V-shaped. Um, I can't see any barrow materials slipped on the inside, no. and the finds have been, well, sparse. Yeah, on the sparsest <laughs> side, yes. That came from high up. Oh, well, the that's... shape is nice, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, for a possible barrow, but there's no evidence for a barrow mound having slipped in. Um, I, I think we can say it's possible, but not disproved. Yeah, but, 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 but let's be honest, we've got plenty of evidence of people living here. We've got oh, rubbish yeah. pits with, with domestic reference. Yeah, I true. think that tends to believe that we haven't got a, a burial here. We've yeah. simply got a nice little domestic enclosure. Yeah. I think it's all a case of we could have both. Yeah. After all, the yeah. pits are earlier, they're late Bronze Age, early Iron Age, and this is Middle Iron Age or later, so they could turn over and do something else. Yeah, I'll go along with that. Yeah, all right. You're overall. Let's extend. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> we're both right. <laughs> you want that as a JPEG? Back in the incident room, Neil's combining the mammoth geophys survey with Stuart's crop marks and adding them together to make one grand plan. Well, there we are then, Tony. We promised you the complete picture with all the evidence, and there it is. God. It's very pretty, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I think it's a bit more than pretty. I think it's spectacular. <laughs> I'll explain what we've got here, Tony. Do you remember all the, the crop marks that we saw from the helicopter? There's the, the detail of them here. What we've done is transcribe them onto this shot, and you can see these are the lines here. We seem to have two curvilinear enclosures here with, with trackways and roadways and so on. And what I've done is highlighted in red, where I think you've got... Two, two settlements effectively here. And this purple line I've highlighted is, is a very straight roadway. It's very distinctly different from this group. And it's heading straight towards that, that Roman mm -hmm. enclosure there. Mm. Francis, Stuart called these settlements. They look like aliens. <laughs> 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 They're very funny settlements. They're known as banjos. And uh, you've got these trackways around the outside, probably to get livestock in and out of the settlement. And then you'd actually had houses in the middle there. It's very unusual in this part of England to find two together. That's right, very yes. unusual. Mm -hmm. Tim, when you were excavating up on the clump, did you imagine that down here it would be as full of activity as this? Not at all, no. It, it's changed the picture, really, because with everything you put together here, I mean, we've got the early Iron Age, the late Bronze Age, Middle Iron Age over here in these new enclosures, the missing bit from this side of the road. And the Romans, fantastic. Really, it's put the hill fort into its landscape context over, what, 1,500 years? And it's not cost me a penny. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you believe it? <laughs> the story of the area around the clumps stretches back to the Bronze Age nearly 3,000 years ago. We now know that the hill fort was first built in around 600 BC. In its shadow was a thriving community of early Iron Age farms, which stretched from the very earliest structures immediately below the ramparts to Carenza's farmstead and into the distance. Then 300 years later, they moved to a new banjo settlement and used the hill for farming. Eventually, the hill fort was abandoned and a Roman villa was built here on the southern slopes of Round Hill. Three days ago, we came here to try and work out the relationship between this landscape and that hill fort. Like most of us, I thought the answer would come from the most obvious feature around here, the top of Round Hill. But if I've learned one thing over the last three days, it's to look beyond the obvious. The answer actually came from the air photos, those amazing crop marks, the thousands of pieces of pottery and building material, and last but not least, the most extensive geophysical survey time teams ever undertaken. All of which helped us to tell the story of the largest archaeological landscape we've ever discovered. Oh, and we didn't find a single newt. <laughs> 